But the lesson there is to not delay the things you actually want to do. How long did it take you to hit a million from the day you started real estate? From the day I started real estate, it took me about, do not start a family if you cannot take care of yourself. Okay, so now Fuji. It's cool. Haven't subscribed already? Hit that subscribe button. Turn on that notification bell. I appreciate you guys so much. Hope you guys are doing well. We are here gonna be tasting a bunch of asian snacks that we picked up from japan and the philippines but also it's gonna be a lot of lessons and data sets that we got from traveling philippines and japan probably the best trip ever highly highly recommend if you want to carve out time to actually be able to travel carve out time to actually have the freedom to go visit places travel with family take your family to places and also have the money to actually do this we're actually going to be covering that because wealth and abundance is not just about finances. It's actually about having the free time to do things. Okay. And I mean, being able to do this while you're still young, you know, in your maybe twenties, thirties, even forties is still considered young. Even now I coach people in their fifties that are already living that digital nomadic lifestyle. They're making great money. They've solved the money problems. They have awesome relationships and they have the ability to travel the world. That's what I want for you guys sooner than later. And we're going to be talking about that while we enjoy these snacks. But if you're someone that wants to reach full on financial abundance and abundance in all realms and health, wealth, relationships, and passions, the goal here is that we want to personalize that for you. So if you're serious about those goals, seriously, send me a DM, DM me the word confidence. And I'd love to help build that up for you, work with you one-on-one -on -one and in group settings. So you can actually have the confidence to do this. And yes, it is about money. So you have the resources to do that. But if you're actually not even confident in yourself, well, then it's very difficult for me to help you reach that point. So I want to develop core confidence so you can actually get into real estate so that you can actually have financial freedom and passive income, regardless of wherever you are in the world. I want you to be able to have great marketing skills so that whatever you do, once you become a great marketer, you can again, make money from a phone or a laptop, and then also develop that high performance habits so that you're not stuck becoming a low performer, not having that confidence and just not even believing that you can do it. I believe in you. And sometimes I get pissed off because I believe in you sometimes more than you guys actually believe in yourselves. And it kills me because I'm a born teacher, but I want to see you guys reach your goals, right? Um, that being said, send me that DM of confidence. I'd love to help you out with that. Hope you reach that next level, okay? So let's press some snacks and we're going to be talking about a few data sets that we got from Asia or like lessons. So first one, really, I don't know what the snacks these are. So I'm going to allow my girlfriend to pick out what snacks, what snacks you want to try first before we jump into the first lesson. So we got this, it says Racco coffee milk. This is a, a Tokyo banana. She whispers. What are you eating? Dried squid? No, no, no. I do like dried squid though, Nelson. But I don't know if you tried it, but this is called the Tokyo banana. And because it's in Tokyo, we're going to talk about some lessons from Tokyo. So one of the first things is overcoming adversity, right? We were trying to get back to our airport on the last day and we're carrying out all our luggages. You know, we got like, what is it, five luggages total? Three, well, three, and then the two small ones. Oh, yeah, the three big ones and we have the small ones. No, the three big ones are in Oh, right. Yeah, they were in the Philippines. Yeah, so we had three large luggages and we basically had to haul that into the subway. Oh, I don't know what's in there. Yeah, as we're hauling this, we're running to all these obstacles. I'm getting like, we're both getting stressed out. We don't want to miss our next subway. Uh, the train's going to come, you know, it's like an hour and a half train ride to the airport. We want to make sure we get onto the right train. You know, I'm getting sweaty. I'm trying to make sure I'm like deadlifting both of these luggages while she's carrying one and we're trying to go down these stairs. As we get down, we realize as we see these signs, we're at the wrong section of the station. So we got to go back up 
carried up all these stairs because you can't take the elevator. It's just um, you can't get onto that side of the, the road. And, you know, I was getting stressed out. I can see that she was getting stressed out. Michelle says, save some for me for sure, bro. We'll see. Unless we're going to eat them all tonight. Um, and what ended up happening is like, I can see on her face that she's getting like stressed out. And my male imperative is to just be like, oh, like it's all good. You know, we're, you know, first world problems, right? Ha ha. We get to travel um, the world. And now we're just like, you know, dealing with a little bit of adversity. Um, but I knew that was not the right call. Right. And the lesson here was really, for one, Nelson mentions travel lighter, bro. Yeah, definitely. That's something we talked about. Um, it was actually a lot of the stuff we're bringing back, which is we actually have to buy a suitcase there. Um, but the other lesson really was sometimes that adversity is existential, like it's personal, right? Like I had to let her deal with that until after we got onto the subway. And then once we were all good, we ate some uh, waffles that we had bought. And then we we're just like laughing at it. I'm like, oh man, like, you know, that was kind of difficult. Um, but the big lesson I had was really like, sometimes, yeah, these overcoming obstacles. Yes, we want to help. Uh, I know a lot of us guys like to do that. We just want to like solve problems and help. Um, but sometimes we got to allow other people to deal with the issue. And then all that was going in my mind was just like, you got this, just like all positive reinforcement. Like you've been through more difficult things. Um, da, 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 and just like brainwashing myself to go through it. Um, and yeah, it all worked out. But that was kind of the first lesson. Now let's try this Tokyo banana. Well, too bad in the chat. Oh, it tastes like coffee. It says coffee on it. Yeah, I was like, I was confused. Yeah. Rat coffee, rat coffee milk. It was pretty good. Not too sweet. That's uh that's the line. If you're uh if you like Asian snacks, you know it's all about not being too sweet. Oops, too bad. Hope you're doing well. Cool. Yeah. Adversity, sometimes it is existential. You gotta do it. Even if we want to help people, you gotta make sure that they go through the adversity as well. Um, yeah. Next one, you pick, lady. I'm going to drink my hokchicha latte right here. Nelson asks, uh, did we play pachinko? We did not play pachinko. We're not really gamblers. Um, she's actually, have you ever been in a casino? Once, but I only watched. Oh, you've only been there once, ever, and just watch people play. Um, I actually don't. I've never played... I think I pressed a few slots, but nothing crazy like that. Um, I think next time, maybe we should just check it out. We went to the arcade, though. I guess spent some good amount of time in the arcade. Yeah. Oh, what's this? It's strawberry chocolate. This is a strawberry chocolate. I bite half, right? I'm not, not going to eat the whole thing. Can't see how this goes. And where do we get this? Kyoto? Tokyo? I think, I think we got this in Tokyo. But for the next lesson, well, I'll eat this. Mmm. It's like freeze-dried strawberries. That's really good. Again, not too sweet. This is a lesson I learned in Kyoto while I was running. So I was trying to not trying to, I was trading for a, for a marathon slash a half marathon first uh, out there. And, you know, I'm running around temples and I made sure that this time I didn't put in music, right? I wanted to do a no input run. So one of the runs actually, I was uh, actually filling a vacancy while running. So that was pretty cool. Um, filled the vacancy. So we were at um, 100%, no, sorry, 0% vacancy in the portfolio for the rental side. Um, so it goes to show good systems and having good people on your team does help. And just make sure that when you're traveling, you want to be able to have good people and a team back home. Is there some things that you can do? You know, I can still talk with tenants, make sure that they're all good with the property. They're interested. I can close them on the phone, but I can't physically do showings, right? That's where my team um, handles that. So they're awesome, super grateful for that. And then after that call, I decide to do the rest of my run without input, meaning no music, just running. And while doing that, one of the lessons I found was that connecting with nature is just so key, 
even if you would think it has nothing to do with real estate being a high performer or even running a business, I find having that time away from the computer, from business meetings, from raising money, from closing deals, and like the pressure that comes with being an investor entrepreneur, reconnecting with nature and just like I was running, looking at the trees. I saw like they're not really, um, they're not the Sakura flowers, but they were essentially, what was it? Like the the plum, plum flowers? Yeah, they're like plum trees. So they kind of, they're like, they're still pink. I thought they were beautiful. And I was just watching while I was running. And I'm like, super grateful for all this peace of nature around me. And it was interesting to have the dichotomy of while I'm running around this temple, it's a huge temple complex and there's like parks nearby and you can run through it. There's sections where you're running on pavement, but then also sections where you're running almost like through a mini forest. The combo between that and then looking at the temple was like, yeah, amazing. I, can, I can't even describe in words how beautiful it was running there. But right next to me was just people going to work. It was early in the morning and I could sense the difference between the grind there is different versus, you know, I'm like a tourist just enjoying my run during the day. And it really taught me to appreciate spending time away from just the grind, right? I was still working there, you know, one to four hours a day. Uh, now that I'm back, you know, I had a full eight hour day today. Love what I do, love teaching. And having that reset away from the West was uh, priceless. Uh, Nelson says, are rents going up substantially this year? Substantially this year, 10 to 15%, you're seeing the same trend. Yeah, um, I actually increased rents 10%, be, yeah, around 10 per, uh, around 12% on uh, the vacancies that I filled. Um, so yeah, rents are going up and it makes sense, right? I, I don't know if you agree, but it's like, you know, with interest rates going up, a lot of us landlords are like, you know, especially if you didn't buy property, you would be forced to increase rents. I just looked at comparables of what other people are charging. And I was like, wow, like I'm charging way under market. So I was like, hey, why not just increase rents? People were already applying. So like, why not? So I've been seeing a very similar trend. Let's try this tea. I don't know if you guys ever had hochicha, but uh, it's awesome. I love it. Hochicha is not matcha. Eh? It's roasted green tea. It's roasted green tea. Yeah. So it's really good. By the way, if you have questions, drop them in the chat. I'd love to help you guys out, whether it's your goals or other obstacles that you have. But yeah. When was the last time you went to Japan, Nelson? If you brought your family and kids to Japan, that'd be pretty cool. I know you traveled quite a bit when you're uh, back in the day as well. You still travel quite a bit. <laughs> Next one, what do you want to try? Mm. The Yema. So this is Yema. It's supposed to be cheese Yema. So this is, uh, it's almost like caramel made from condensed milk um, from the Philippines. All right. And then we'll jump into a lesson I learned from the Philippines. Uh, Nelson, how's your crypto? We got a big 30K run this month. You still invest in crypto? Um, very little in crypto right now. I'm mostly in Ethereum. Uh, but yeah, still just... Dollar cost averaging Ethereum. Um, I'm glad to see that you got a nice little jump in uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin's treating you well. Ethan Bitcoin. Okay, so let's try this out. Yam is actually one of my favorites. I already know what this tastes like. Ooh, that's sweet. The snacks in the Philippines are way sweeter than snacks in Japan. It's crazy. And the juice. The juice is like overtly sweet. In Japan, everything is like not as sweet and to the point where it's like sometimes it's not even sweetened at all. Like I had iced tea in Japan and it was literally like roasted barley tea with no sugar. It was it was really good though. Mm. Like, well, Philippines. What I learned overcoming adversity is the importance of linking this back to family, right? Just going back to like, why did I even get started with real estate investing? I know a lot of you guys that 
watch my contact follow me here. Big reason you even got into real estate investing or even trying to get your money right or you know stay in shape and take care of yourself, get into better relationships and whatnot is for family. And being in the Philippines really helped me reconnect with that. Um, I actually had the experience of sleeping in my uh, late cousin's bedroom. So my good Jair passed away uh, about, like to say, a year ago. It might even be two years. Um, time's been like a blend in like, you know, COVID times. Um, we slept in his room and it was funny because he's a little bit of a jokester. And I woke up the next morning to work, right? So I'm on the second floor. That's where his room is. And outside is a balcony. In the balcony, that's where um, we JR, my cousin there, he would put his cactuses, he'd take care of cactuses out there. And um, near, before he'd passed away, due to like pain, he would actually stay up later in the night and in the mornings because he couldn't sleep. And he would just take care of his cactuses and he would mess around with people as they would go and be going to work in the morning and then spray them with, um, you know, a little water hose or whatever. But I guess the neighbors were hearing me do coaching calls in the morning. Uh, I was doing coaching calls at like 6.30 in the morning. Um, so everyone's going to work and was getting ready and whatnot. And I'm there going to do coaching calls in the morning. And I look from behind and I guess sometimes from the front, somewhat like my cousin. Um, so people were like asking my my auntie, my tita, like, do you, you guys have visitors at at home? Like we hear someone speaking English, like, upstairs and it kind of sounds like Kuya JR. Um and then my other cousin, my Ate there, uh, she was like joking around that she like uh Artita said, like her mom said that, oh yeah, like you know, my uh nephew is here visiting from Canada. Um and then my other cousin's like, oh you should have told them that it's actually Kuya JR. Um and he's like, oh I don't have like we don't have visitors here. And that he was just uh kind of freak everyone out that maybe like the ghost is there. And then my cousin was telling me like, okay, hey, next morning you should like spray people um, with the hose in the morning and then kind of scare them that like, you know, maybe Kuya JR is like spraying them uh, back from the, the dead, let's say. Um, but yeah, like reconnecting back there, kind of seeing family and whatnot um, really made me realize that it's not just about making enough money for like myself and my immediate family, but also like how much more people can we help out, right? Um, even if like I'm good, like it's about more than just making money for ourselves. That was a big class. Nelson says, I went to Japan 15 years ago, was experiencing education in the school. Awesome experience. Close face talking though. No janitors in schools. Kids break for 20 minutes a day to clean school. Oh, cool. Probably teaches them a little bit of discipline. The discipline there and like the efficiency in Japan is completely different from here. Like washrooms are so clean in Japan. It's unreal. And everyone knows like where to go, what side of the road to walk in. Everyone's like very efficient. Um, food, like good food at a restaurant, like a sit down restaurant was served faster than Jollibee and McDonald's and fast food. It was pretty crazy. Like we ordered that udon. And they gave it to us in like 30 seconds. Like it was crazy. It was like pre prepared, right? So they just put it all together. Um, but yeah, no, that was like the efficiency there is going to be the segue into the next lesson once we pick the next snack. Which snack we do? Got this cheese chocolate. Asia like to combine cheese with sweets. It's not really a thing in uh, the West, eh? And so if we open this, check it out. It looks like a like a mini cheese, but it's actually chocolate. I don't know if it's a mix of cheese. We'll, we'll find out. Efficiency is going to be the next lesson. Um, that and Omega, my watch. Uh, no, this is a citizen. I got my Tsukiyomi, which is the I think it's the moon moon god in in Japan. Um, uh, it actually tracks the moon phase, which I think is pretty cool. What's that? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, hell yeah. Hope you're doing well, Marcus. We got the cheese chocolates. I'm going to show my YouTube stream and then the IG stream there. 
Shout out to everyone on the streams. Appreciate you guys. If you guys have it, follow me on YouTube. It helps. Now, let's try this cheese chocolate where we talk about deficiency in that lesson I got from Japan. It's like white chocolate. I don't know if I like it. It's good. Yeah, it's not yeah, it's not like cheesecake or cheddar cheese. It's more like I don't know, Emmental cheese. It's not mozzarella. Let go. But let's see if I melt it in my mouth. You know, if you're a chocolate connoisseur, I would like moi. You know, I worked at Lint, so apparently I'm a chocolate connoisseur. But we are taught that you never bite chocolate, especially real chocolate, not candy. You got to read the, the fine print. Are you eating candy or are you eating chocolate? But you're supposed to let chocolate melt in your mouth. And I'll attest, this tastes better when you melt it in your mouth. Significantly better. So next lesson from Asia and Japan specifically is like the efficiencies in like everything that they do. The train stations are super efficient. Um, you get drip coffee instead of like instant coffee at your hotel so it's this coffee that like you open up you put it on top of your cup and then you like pour it so it becomes like drip coffee basically um not a french press it's more like the yeah the drip the funnel uh, i forget what it's called but anyway way better than instant coffee for sure how does this relate to efficiencies in like work and business um just building systems and I was able to take a step away from being stuck in the business to just build better systems because I'm forced to have those checklists, step-by-steps, be able to delegate, automate different tasks. Um, we actually change our automations. Before I was using many chat, pour over coffee. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Well said. Thank you. Before I was using many chat, the last time I visited Asia, and that was a great system as well. Like I would turn it on at night, people would message and it would be able to still help people out, see what program fits best and get them to apply to that program. I would even wake up some days with new students. So that was awesome. Now we're moving towards using more go high level because we're not just on Instagram anymore. You know, we're getting leads from affiliates. We're getting leads from people on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, we have people that are setters and closers that I work with now. So we need something a little bit more robust. And Japan really inspired me to pay more attention to those better systems for the business, right? Make things very efficient. Make sure that a big one is going to be the time management is huge, especially when there's a big time difference, which is going to be the next lesson is managing time, which is something I did learn to do quite a bit better there. And also managing time when you're on a paycation, right? Because you know, it's very easy. I could have just stayed in a hotel and just worked the whole time. That is not the goal of that trip, right? So I want to spend time with family, enjoy the trip, actually be able to like be present. So you know, I was working about one to four hours a week um, or a day, I should say. And we're going to be talking about some time management skills that helped while I was traveling there. Uh, but let's pick the next step. Ooh. Ooh, we got Bolveron uh, Classic. You guys haven't had Bolveron? Yeah, try it out. Pretty sure you can find this in the in Canada. Just gotta go to like a Asian Filipino store and you can find it. So, so let's try this out and then talk a little bit about time management. If your goal is to make money online, and also if you're a real estate investor, wanting to make sure that you're not just stuck in your own city, but you can still manage the portfolio away from your own city. So you can actually travel because the goal is not just to make money. The goal is actually to have the freedom to enjoy. Oh, you got your own? Okay, cool. To actually enjoy your money, right? So with time management, while I was there on vacation, Something I learned was that, you know, in the beginning, I'd say the first maybe week, I was waking up very early, talking like 
4.30, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning to do coaching calls and then make sure that, you know, I was doing some consultation calls as well. Later on, I'd say after a few of those, I started to realize like, I don't like this, right? And I'd rather have calls later in the day or even later in the evening so I can still enjoy the rest of my trip and not have to like dread waking up super early, then go do the whole thing of traveling around. We were actually moving quite a bit. Like we moved like to a different city each day for like the first four, like seven days or something, the first week. Yeah, maybe like first week or first 10 days. Like we we're just on the go. Um, so that was fairly difficult on my body. Plus, I did have um an anti-jet lag protocol that I uh, got from one of my mentors. And that helped a lot, but still like moving quite a bit and having the temperature change of going from like cold Canadian winter to just a straight up heat in Philippines was pretty difficult. I had one day, I think it was like the third day or the fourth day. I, I thought I was having a fever. I thought I was getting sick. So I had to get like tin to like check my temperature. And she's like, no, like you're not, you're just, I think it's just hot. And I was like, I was like freaking out. I was like, oh my God, like I don't want to get sick. I had calls, like coaching stuff. And I was like, oh, this sucks. Um, that taught me that even if I was doing a vacation, make sure that I have that balance, right? So, you know, the plan at first for me was to do like, you know, about four hours of work a day and then make sure that I do the travel and whatnot. Um, kind of cut that down closer to like one to one to four. Some days I'd actually be on my phone a little bit more, especially while we're moving towards destinations. I found that managing time, mm, but an ube flavored one, What's that? What? Hmm. I hear you. We can whistle first. Whistle with this. Oh, like whistle after you eat it. Hmm. Oh, that's very dry. Oh, that's super dry. I'm trying to see who can whistle first. No drinking, right? Yeah, you win. Nelson says the temperature change sucks. Came back from plus 25, plus 30 in Florida for a month of minus four in Winnipeg is hard on my body. Yeah, it was pretty rough. I find cold to hot harder on my body than hot to cold. Because today it was, well, I guess it wasn't minus, um, you know, it's not minus 20, it's not minus 40 here in Edmonton right now. But I think it was like minus 25 in the morning and I went for a, a four mile run. That wasn't that bad, actually. I was bundled up. When I ran in the Philippines the first time in the heat, like I was straight up dying. So yeah, you definitely do got to take care of yourself when you're traveling. So let's see what those, those big changes. Um, for the ones that care, another lesson I got is actually have systems when you're going to travel far like that to take care of your body, meaning don't neglect your health. And that still have some sort of workout routine. You now, for me, it was like crank out a few push ups before any meal, maybe some squats before meals. I was still training for running. It was like every other day, I'd still do some sort of training. And that's going to be key to like make sure your immune system is still good. And I found it did help with adapting to the weather a little bit, um, but it was pretty difficult that first, I think the first two runs. I did like a two hour run. And then I did seven miles uh, in like the blaring heat. That was pretty difficult. So now I look at it, find it easier to run in the cold. Um, yeah, I know everyone's body's different. So you got to be a, like, pretty cognizant and aware of that. I do find it easier to go from hot to cold than cold to hot. Which is weird because you'd think, you know, my Filipino genes would be better adapted to the heat, but it was not. I love AC. Cool. Next snack, next lesson. Mm -hmm. Which one do you want? For once, back, watching back home, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're watching the replay, drop your comments down below. Let me know if you have questions around Real estate, financial abundance, 
or just overall questions around lifestyle, don't you want to ask me? I still read all the comments. I'd love for you to drop your comments, drop your questions below. It does help. And yeah, appreciate everyone that is a subscriber, is a follower. Seriously, you guys like make this actually possible to actually be a creator, document my life, document the process of becoming a real estate investor, and helping other real estate investors because I don't know everything. I'm not a guru. You know, my first mentor is still on here. Um, Nelson right there. Shout out to Nelson. And just trying to document the process to help more of Canadians, more people, especially young folks, get into real estate and set up their bloodline, set up themselves to actually live the life that they want, live the life that is to their full potential, and make sure that you're actually just like happy and abundant and you find purpose in this. Because yes, most of you guys do want to make more money. Awesome. Once we solve that problem, I'd love to help you solve that problem together, help you get into real estate. Then you're going to be left off with problems that money cannot solve. And we have systems to help you out with that. That's going to be around your health and your relationships. And of course, your passion and purpose. I'm going to save some snacks for me. Coffee next week. Yeah, if you're still in uh, Win if you're at Winnipeg, I actually get back uh, later this week. So I'd love to sit down and co have coffee and catch up. Do, 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 do. Oh, cool. What is this one? This one is Mount Fuji Alford chocolate biscuits. Oh, it's a Mount Fuji biscuit. Check this out. Oh, this is melting fast in my hand. It's a Mount Fuji. It's cool. It's very cool. All right. Whoops. Check this out. It's melting fast in my mouth. In my hand. Here. It's pretty good. It's got like a good. it's not sour, but no, that was, that was pretty good. I do want to visit Mount Fuji next time, probably. We're pretty soon. Next lesson I got from traveling Asia is do not delay the things that you actually want to do. Right. Truth be told, I almost didn't go on this Asia trip. Um, I was a little bit nervous of like, you know, I had to make a certain amount of money while I was here. I wanted to make sure I had good systems in place and wanted to make sure that I could actually take a step away from the business because just because we're working remotely and things are like being built online doesn't mean it's actually easy to grow and scale the business while I'm traveling Asia. In fact, I just accept that we're probably not going to grow the business I'm not going to increase income to a certain degree while I was traveling. And that's just something I had to accept, right? Like I'd rather did the traveling in Asia. Now, the first time I traveled Asia, it was specifically just to figure out how to run a business online. So we actually grew the business a little bit while I was traveling Asia the first time. This time though, I wanted to actually have more of a vacation, right? So I actually planned out to do more things and I was a little bit worried at first and there was a part of me that didn't want to make the jump and actually go on the trip. I'm glad I did. So I got to spend more time you know, with my girlfriend, meet her family out there, spend more time with my family. It was amazing. Probably the best trip I ever had in my life. I'm glad I did it. But the lesson there is to not delay the things you actually want to do. It could have been very easy for me to just be like, no, I'll just stay home. I'll just like focus on the business, help the students and clients out for here, make sure that the rental portfolio is all good. I knew I was going to have, you know, up, up to three vacant possible vacancies while I was on the trip. But I said, Hey, like I've already built a certain process to work while I'm in Asia. And if the business doesn't grow, well, I'm glad that I took the risk while I was a little bit younger to actually have a portfolio that even if we don't necessarily grow, like we're not buying deals while I'm out there. Matter of fact, we did close two deals while I was out there. So that was awesome. Um, mostly like I was more on the passive side, kind of just like point guarding things. Um, but definitely key that I did not delay the decision to actually go on a trip because when has delaying decisions ever helped any of us, right? I can't remember a time where if I delayed a decision, it actually helped. Um, it's like, I already know 
that I needed to just go on the trip, right? Was it scary a little bit to try and build a business fully, take a step away from Winnipeg and Canada and like leave the clients and just do everything fully online, even if we already do things mostly online? Um, I know the time change kind of worried me a little bit, but uh, yeah, not delaying that decision to actually go on the trip was huge. I'm glad I actually did that. Welcome, Jonas. Welcome, John. Henry, what's up? Hope you're doing well. On the chat. Okay, next snack. What do we got? Ooh. Yeah, if you guys uh like the stuff, you guys like the content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Follow us on YouTube. Follow us on TikTok too. Seriously, trying to grow the TikTok. Um, it's probably the algorithm. Do I spend time on TikTok? Not really. But if you guys are there, if you guys can get value from that, awesome. I'd love to do that. And I'd love to still create content on TikTok for you guys. Shout out to everyone supporting on Facebook too. That's been a huge help. And then of course, if you want our help to get into real estate, let me know. Drop a rocket emoji. Just DM me that. But I'd love to help you get into real estate and also build those systems so you actually work and increase your income working online. It's something I've been focusing on quite a bit whether it's something you're going to use to increase your income to get more properties, or maybe you already have properties, you're already looking at scaling and you want to actually build these systems so you can actually travel more, be able to make more money, get to a millionaire at a young age. Because once you hit that millionaire status, then compounding is working in your favor, right? And again, it's not about the money. It's going to be about what the money represents. Okay? Millionaire is really just that baseline that you want to get to that offers a certain level of freedom, if you're intentional with how you get that freedom. Okay, I know a lot of millionaires that have the money, but they don't have great relationships, they're in terrible health, and they don't have actually the free time. So they're just like trapped in their job and their work. It's like, cool, you have a million bucks. Can't really enjoy it, right? That's not what I want for you guys. I want to make sure that you have abundance in all realms of life. Yes, we start in health, sorry, wealth, but we also want to make sure that you get that in health, relationships, and passions, okay? Free time is going to be key. So what's the point of having money if you're not going to actually enjoy it, right? So next snack, which one do you want to do? I want to do the Tokyo cheese thing. This one? Oh, yeah, we can do Hopia. Cool. So we got the, this is the Yema Hopia? What is it? Oh, yeah, this is a Leche Hopia. Usually this is made out of uh, lard and bean, right? It's like mung bean sometimes. Yeah, this one it's uh with leche, so I guess it's like cream, milk. This is a Filipino dessert, by the way. Yona says, "How long did it take you to hit a million from the day you started real estate? From the day I started real estate, it took me about three years. Would not have been possible if I didn't learn how to actually close private deals, close." Capital, right? I had to raise capital to do that. You know, when I, when I, my very first deal, I put my life savings into that deal. Now it took me longer to be honest, because yes, it took me three years from when I started real estate, but I had 10 sources of income before real estate, right? And in the very beginning, I started broke. I was working at McDonald's, started learning about financial literacy after I realized I worked the first year and I was like, Cool. I made 16 grand working at McDonald's. Where the hell did all this money go? And I realized, okay, hey, like if I want to actually help my parents retire, if I want to actually like live a good life, I got to figure out this money thing. I don't want to deal with this like later on. Like I don't want to be stressed out and like not have money handled. So then I started learning everything I could about financial literacy, went to every free seminar. Um in Winnipeg, went to all the free trainings, read a bunch of the books. It literally took me five years. So I started at 17, um, didn't buy my first house till I was like 22, 23. And then from there, um, was able to hit that millionaire status after the, the first three. It took, it took me three years. Um, and getting the second million was way easier, right? Because it compounds, right? Getting from zero to one is actually borderline impossible. Because you got to realize like zero to one, and I'm not even talking about one million, I'm talking about zero to like your first thousand, your first 10,000, or your first like just that one unit 
is so difficult because you're starting from nothing, right? E contracting it says compounding those wins, bro. Yes, sir. Yeah, you got to compound those wins. It just gets easier and easier and easier, right? But when I started, I'd already built certain skill sets, right? I already like published a book. Um, that in my book, How to Never Be Broken, when I first wrote it, it actually says like I don't own real estate at the time. I should probably update that actually now that I said it out loud because I've been giving out that free ebook as a lead magnet now. I used to sell it for like 20 bucks, 16 bucks or whatever. Um, now we give it out for free. If you want to buy the book, awesome. Like it's on Amazon. Make it as cheap as possible at this point. I've sold enough copies that like, I just want to give it out for free. But I remember when I wrote the book, it goes to the 10 different income sources um, that I had. And then there's one there where I explained rental income because I knew it was an income source, but I make the caveat that um, while I'm writing this book, I actually don't have rental properties just yet. should probably write a new version of that because I do have rental properties now. So I think it might confuse people. Um, yeah, let's make a note of that because if I don't write this down, I'm going to forget. Hey, Ben. You got a notebook here. Oh, nice sound. Yeah, so we're going to do that. And actually, this gives me a... Hmm, this is good. You don't like it? It tastes like sweet cardboard. Does it taste like sweet cardboard? It tastes like a box. I like it. It's delicious. So as I'm talking about... Oh, wow. This actually gives me a <clears throat> idea of my next book. I should just turn financial abundance into a book. It's financial intelligence. The financial intelligence program that uh, is now a program that we sell. It used to sell for 300 bucks. We have it on a massive discount for $9.97. So again, I want to give you guys access to that. That's the six steps to getting your financial literacy handled. I wrote that during the pandemic, um, mostly because very quickly... So when lockdowns kind of happened, um, I did two things. I researched who was the philosopher that lived through a pandemic. Um, Marcus Aurelius, one of the fathers of Stoicism, or one of the famous Stoics, I should say, he actually was not only a philosopher during a pandemic, but he was also a philosopher and the king slash emperor of the time during a pandemic. And when he compares his pandemic to what we kind of dealt with, after realizing that and after reading 1984, and then when people start getting labeled as like essential and not essential, that's when I kind of realized this is not necessarily about health. This is about money. This is a financial crisis, not health. Because Marcus Aurelius has talked about his pandemic, like people are dying left and right. Like he lost a bunch of family members um, fast, right? Don't want to get too conspiratorial, but quickly realized it was about money. So then I realized, okay, like I'm just going to take this book that I had written. Well, I was writing at the time. Um, so I wrote the financial intelligence book, Six Steps Again to Financial Literacy. And then I turned into a program. And that's how I got into the, the digital like coaching teaching space. Because I was already teaching. And while I was teaching during that time, I actually had a lot of free time because all my teaching was done through YouTube and videos. So it gave me a bunch of free time to actually write this book. And glad we did that. Eventually, I realized that how to never be broke again gets you to that level exactly, how to not be broke, right? Which, you know, the average family and the average household in the West is a 2016 stat that I got back when I was still uh, working in the financial industry. They don't have $1,000 to the household's name. And in three weeks, if their paycheck was cut off, they would be going into debt. Not that they would have debt, but they would be going into debt. And you got to realize that if you are in debt, meaning you have more debt than assets, you're actually worse off than broke. So how to never be broke again gets you to a point where you never go under a net worth of zero and you're constantly increasing your net worth, right? That being said, financial abundance is the next level of that. And it makes sense that it's probably going to be the next book that I write. And I want to make sure that it's very concise in a sense. 
is I want it to also be different from the program because I don't want it to be exactly like the program. I want to put a bunch of value in there because the program set up with like exercise. We're still going to put that in there. But yeah, this is, uh, this is why I like doing these live streams because a lot of these live streams, it's, I should say all these live streams other than when I teach my actual students in Alliance, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in um, the group coaching, like those are structured. So if you guys watching me online here, even you guys watching on YouTube, if you watch this on the replay, because we're, we're recording this live right now, um, you actually don't know how I teach unless you've been in the actual paid programming. Because the free stuff that we give, it's all pop of the head. I'm like freestyling, trying to give as much value as I can still as I practice these public speaking skills and make sure that I give you as much value as I can, but it's restyled, right? Versus I've spent years, ever since I was 17, trying to figure out how money works. And then the past, you know, five, six years, we'll be going on six now, just figure out how real estate works. <clears throat> so when you get into those programs, it's like each time, whether you're going into a, the, the paid programming, whether it's a seminar or a webinar, or even if you're jumping into one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching, that coaching is very structured, right? I know exactly how to move someone from being broke all the way to making their first million, all the way to even I've helped millionaires already get to that next level. And then now they're solving like other problems, right? I had one coaching student, I had two coaching students last night. You're in my real estate program. They're already doing very well. They're already in well, six, like one guy's 19. He's already in over six figures net worth. Um, the other guy is closer to my age, already has done deals. And they already solved kind of the wealth problem. They're already moving towards that. Then it's like the new issues of like, for them, it became dating. So then we asked, it's funny because like the same funnels I used to raise millions of dollars in capital, I actually take that. And I, that's what I used back when I was like, you know, still single girlfriends that get me right now. I don't use that funnel anymore, but it's the same funnel for making a ton of money. But yeah, with these free content, I know that the people that are serious use this free content, they get inspired to take action, but eventually they want that one-on-one, -on -one, they want that personal training for real estate and for financial abundance. Then they jump into the programs and that's where I get to cater and personalize everything for them. Use my skills as a teacher to not just figure out where they're at, what they need and how to customize that to their own personal lives, but also make sure it's very structured and it's step-by-step, step, literally every piece of homework that I give to students is meant to get them to the next level. And I use this free content basically to just, again, document the process. This is how we're able to just have free content dropping daily. I think we drop like, uh, like 30 to 70 on good days, pieces of content a day. Um, we drop a ton of content, helps them actually in this business still to this day, and that's why it's just easy for me to make content like all the time, right? Um, personally, I think it's very easy to make content if you're just doing it. It's, it's not that hard to even drop one piece of content a day if you're actually in it. Um, I also have a bunch of free time because I've already retired myself out, right? So that being said, if you're serious about your goals, if you serious want to learn how to get into real estate, how to build financial abundance, how to build not just your wealth, but also your active income, passive income, and build a lifestyle so that your life doesn't just all be work, you got to jump into the programs. And seriously, you got you to work with me one-on-one. -on -one, you got to work into group programs at least. And seriously, if you're watching the free stuff, you do not know how I actually teach. This is all just freestyle off the dome. I'm just trying to like give as much free value as I can. And again, this is part of like my creative process as like an artist. It helps me think as well. In the programs, it's completely structured. So... Earl says, Mr. President, hope you're doing well, Earl. Super bogey guy. E contracting says, do you give report cards? We get to see your process um, on the back end. So we get to see who's actually going through programs. So this is why we can have like guarantees that, you know, as long as you continue working with us, we will help you close deals and make sure that you actually build wealth as long as you're actually doing the work, right? I can guide you, but if I go to the back end, I've had this in the past where people are like, you're not actually a school. I'm just called a lead customer. The ones that are in uh, the coaching spaces or if you're like in the education space, a lead customer is a customer that you'll do everything for them and they'll still complain. 
They still won't take action. They'll still blame you. Okay. For the coaches and consultants that watch from here, because I do like truth be told, I'll jump on free calls with competitor coaches. I actually don't believe we actually have any competitors. That being said, in, the, in a certain framework, you know, competition is real. Uh, I believe more in creation over competition. But in a certain framework, I'll actually jump on calls with free calls with other competitors and I'll just give them, you know, things that I paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to get better at what I do because I'm actually just a teacher. And my goal here is I'm going to die one day. People are going to forget about me. But if I can push education, you know, I'm not egotistical enough to think that I'm going to transform education alone. Like I actually need good teachers and other good coaches out there to teach this stuff. So I'll actually sit down with people and just give them free game for like hours. Um, I get a high from it, right? Because I'm just like, oh, cool. Like I just give all the free stuff that I paid for um, complete to, for free to these other coaches. So they get better and their students get better. It's all win-win, just upward cycle. And it feels abundance, right? Um, that being said, a lead customer, how we avoid this, it's kind of like we have a certain part of a report card. We can see how people are going through the programs. You sign up for financial abundance, sign up for the real estate course. I can see people's progress. You know, people complain now, like, oh, this coaching doesn't work. I just look at the results of these students. I'm like, cool, you didn't even open the course. How do you expect this to work? Right? I have full belief that our courses are not only the best right now, but they continually get better because we do this full time, right? No, I don't think there's a single day where I don't take a, a coaching call at this point or a consultation call. But I love it. It doesn't feel like work. My goal is to really almost eliminate all the other aspects of the business. So I'm just teaching, right? That's really what I want to do. I want to just teach because it does not feel like work. It's the same thing back when I had my teaching career. If I'm just teaching, like no administration, none of the political stuff that happens in the public school education system. If it was just teaching, amazing. I'd, I'd be living the dream and I'm getting close to that, right? Still some backend stuff that I get to do, but you can just do free events for you guys and then have those in-person events, have the webinars. I just get to teach and also just get to teach my one-on-one students, get to teach my group coaching students and then not have to do any more sales calls. The marketing is easy because then I just document the process, right? Like it's very easy to make content. I look at content as making, as teaching as well. It's very easy to just pop. Like the minimum, the bare minimum is one piece of content. Oops. The bare minimum is one piece of content. That's easy mode, right? Now scaling is having a, a system that we can plug in so that we have like pump out like 30, 70 pieces of content a day. The contrast things, they are amazing. No joke. Yeah, appreciate you. And again, when students take action, they get the results, right? You know, Jonas, what was the deal? He took action, followed the results. You got to have control of these inputs. And that's why we understand the human psychology and the human nature of things where if I don't identify and I don't have systems around lead customers, I'm not actually helping the people that want to get to the next level because then I'll be giving attention to a lead customer that's going to complain anyway. They're not going to take action. They're not going to add value to the community. It's part of what we want to build as well as a community of people that, yeah, we care about building wealth, but we also want to get to the next level and give back to the community. It's more than just about money. I get that that's difficult to understand sometimes when you're in a position where you're still building up that income. You know, I was there too. I started broke. You know, family was lower middle class at most times where both my parents worked double jobs for a lot of years when I was younger. I didn't see my parents on Thanksgiving days, right? But that taught me that it is possible to start from the bottom and move your way up. This is why whether someone's at zero, someone's already like a millionaire wanting to scale, I can still help them regardless of where they're at. The coaching looks different, of course, because everyone's got different needs. And that's why I use what's called an inquiry-based process um, where it's personalized to each student's learning. Um, this is actually based on how Aristotle taught because you know, I love uh, philosophy. And I was taught at a young age when I was still a young teacher, let's say, early career, 
was a good philosophy education is a good education in philosophy, right? You need to not just understand how to teach, but also how humans learn, because that way I can actually cater how you learn and how you can get to the next level and what actually you need when it comes to raising money, when it comes to learning marketing, when it comes to being able to speed up the process so you're not making mistakes that could cost you not just thousands, not hundreds of thousands of dollars, but also cost you time, which is priceless, right? And how do you actually set that up so it's catered to your own situation, right? So I always start um, coaching with actually doing a customized real estate roadmap, which personalized to each student. So I know, okay, like where is a student at, right? Student that's handier, runs a contracting company. That coaching is going to look very different compared to a student that has never even lifted a hammer, right? When I met Coach Denzel, you know, Denzel Sullivan there, he didn't even know what a two by four was, right? Look at him now. Guy's crushing. Need some pastillas, ube flavored, more Filipino snacks. Yeah, a few lessons there in the travels to Asia. Definitely something I want to do again. Probably something I'm going to plan to do annually at this point. My parents do live out there right now, right? They do the whole six months here, six months there. And it was cool seeing that, like, I didn't know this, but, you know, I, I'm the retirement fund. You know, they have some money for retirement, you know, government, uh, pension, all that stuff, which kind of sucks. Like, I don't know if you guys know what OAS is, like old age security. It's terrible. I don't know how people live off just pension and OAS. Boggles my mind. So my mom was always telling me as a kid, like, I'm your biggest investment. Um, mostly because my parents were not supposed to have kids, right? Um, my mom has bipolar disorder. She would be taking medications. And when the when my parents wanted to have kids, the doctor actually said that they can't. It's just take medication. So my parents actually went to the Philippines, talked to a bunch of other doctors, even consulted, um, let's say, more like witch doctor style stuff. And they actually recommend that she go off her medication while I'm about to get conceived and then make sure that for those nine months that they just take care of her mental health as main priority, right? So that she would not have a bipolar episode during that time. Um, that's how basically I was like conceived. Some parents always call me a miracle child, um, not supposed to have been born. And then basically after that, yeah, you did I thought we left. <laughs> That's funny. Get another one. It's pretty good. Um, yeah. Now I get to see how they live in the Philippines. And, you know, I send the money. It's part of like their, for the ones, this is going to be for the ones that, you know, it's been popular to take money from uh, parents that actually buy your first home. Make sure that you don't take an interest-free loan. It sounds awesome. Right, cool. Interest-free loan for mom and dad. It's gonna help set me up, get my first house. Do not take an interest-free loan. Okay. My parents did not invest in my deals until after I had a portfolio of 10, 10 units, right? They did not believe in the real estate. They thought I was crazy, borrowing money from people, closing deals, using that my own money, refinancing until they learned the Burr method after and they started realizing it helped. It and it actually works, right? Especially if you run the numbers properly. By the way, the Burr method still works. You just got to be running your numbers tighter than last time. It's not as it's not an easy mode like it was in uh, 2020, let's say. But the reason you don't want to take an interest-free loan, like, you know, my parents invested with me, but they get an amazing deal because they get an infinite return on their money. Meaning, regardless if they invest in me or not, they're getting a return. They're getting those monthly checks. They're getting part of, uh, investment income. And the first like seven deals that I did was just all for that, right? I actually didn't start taking any of my own money until after I actually closed enough of those deals after they you know set up their retirement. But the main reason you do not want to take an interest-free loan from mom and dad is the following. It's going to cut your potential. It's going to affect your psyche in that you're not going to believe because you don't have the proof 
to actually close deals on your own without mom and dad's help with the interest-free loan. Do not take the interest-free loan. It's going to destroy your full potential. Okay. In fact, if you do take money from mom and dad, make sure that you pay it back just like you would any other investor. Just because they're family, just because they're mom and dad does not mean they don't deserve a return. In fact, now this is just my opinion, I believe they deserve a way higher return. That's why my parents get, my parents get an infinite return on their money, right? Even once their capital is paid back after a deal, they still get that recurring income because I'm essentially their retirement plan, right? And this fuels me because now, not only do I know I can take care of myself, but I can take care of other people. This sets me up for having that belief and setting it up that financially makes sense to have a family in the future, right? Do not start a family if you cannot take care of yourself, okay? Does it make sense, right? Now, take that with a grain of salt, right? You want to make sure that do what it takes to set your family up. That being said, I truly believe do not take an interest-free loan from mom and dad. Make sure you pay them interest. Make sure that they get a return. And in fact, like I mentioned, they should get a better return, right? So with that, while well, I was busy though, because they are retired on the Philippines, right? I didn't realize that they were actually taking some of that money and actually taking care of like some kids out there. I was like, oh, that's cool. Like we're having dinner with these kids. Mm -hmm. Everyone in that village is either on the Hilario side or the Varayo side. So my dad's last name and then my grandma's maiden name. So there's only two families there, which is like one family um, in that village, Larioha, which is kind of funny because we're the Hilario. Um, anyway, everyone there is like family at some point. <laughs> yeah. Did you not realize that? It's funny. <laughs> um, yeah. Like my money doesn't just take care of mom and dad. Like they actually have uh, discretional income to take care of uh, kids out there. So like, you know, they get fed um, more than just rice and salt. Okay. So it helps put things into perspective. You know, in the West, we have such an abundance of opportunity and food out here. And there's people, there's kids that are eating rice and their ulam, their dinner, their um, what we eat in the Philippines with like, you know, just use your rice and then like your main dish, main dish is salt, right? So I thought that was kind of cool where, again, the money just goes more than just for taking care of yourself. It's once you take care of yourself, awesome, cool. You can enjoy all the fun, have all the shopping, clothes, money, cars you want. But after, how do you take care of family? And how can you take care of more people after that? Right. So I thought that was kind of cool. I didn't know that was going on. Um, I found out when I was there. So it was uh it was awesome to see that the money that we send back home goes a little bit further than just taking care of parents. Taking care of parents is cool too. Uh, but it was cool kind of seeing how uh we could help other people and you know these kids get a real meal, not just uh eat salt. <laughs> He contracted. I found that when I started focusing on helping people, I closed three births in three months versus trying to figure out how to get started. Yeah, like this is like a personal philosophy. I try to slip this in into alliance as well um, without becoming like too religious or anything. But I think you really got to do it in service of other people and do it for God, right? Because if it's just for you, like how much is it really, like how much do you really need, right? Like you don't need to be a, a millionaire if you just want to take care of yourself. I ran some people's financial numbers today some people only need like 740 grand or only 840 grand you might think that's like a lot but it, again it's under a million dollars right for you to just take care of yourself and like maybe your immediate family but when you start focusing on offering a service to others making sure that you can get other people to that next level empower them give them the opportunity um just help right it goes way further and when you're in service when you're Kind of again doing it for god is what i fully believe um it goes so for much further and then you'll see that your results kind of explode too right cool but i'll leave you guys with that with that 
hope you guys enjoyed. Um, we got a few more snacks here, but I'm actually getting pretty full. There's a lot of snacks, and it's past 10 here, so it's actually past my it's my food cutoff, right? If I want to get a good night's sleep. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure that don't delay your dreams. Take action. If you want to work with us one-on-one -on -one or a group setting or join Alliance, right? Send me a DM, contact Alliance. I'd love to see if we would be a good fit. If I can help you out, if I can help you reach that next level, I fully believe that if not the financial abundance program, if not the speed of implementation program or financial intelligence or even the real estate stuff, if you do have a program that fits you whatever level you're at, especially for someone that wants to take action. And again, if you're watching these videos, awesome. I appreciate you guys all. This is a little bit of edutation, right? Just me kind of teaching off the top of my head. Like I mentioned, if you haven't been into the programs, you do not actually know how I teach in a structured manner to help you reach those goals, right? Unless you're actually working with us. And so now, not only do you get the structured teaching, but you get the bat phone where you can call me and I can help troubleshoot your specific problems and personalize everything to you. That being said, you guys are awesome. I'd love to chat more, but I'm getting tired because I just got back from Asia yesterday. So if you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that follow button, drop a comment below, share this with a friend. And of course, I appreciate you guys all. I love you all. You guys are awesome. I'll see you guys win and peace. The knowledge I had with real estate wasn't that great. And that's when I knew I needed a mentor to guide me through the steps of minimizing my mistakes and obtaining property. It kept me accountable with the limited time I had after the long hours at work. It taught me things I wouldn't have learned without a mentor. Thank you to Patrick. He's helped, helped me with pretty much everything ever since I started. So big, big shout out to Patrick and Alliance. Nice. Yeah, Nick's an action taker, so <laughs> we can help guide you, but you still got to do work. And yep. Nick is a testimonial for that. Sure. Uh, thank you again, Patrick, for this program. It all, it changed my life, it changed my mindset, it changed everything. It, that was the best six, six weeks of my life. I just want to give a shout out to my man, Patrick. Just honestly been one of the best teachers that I've ever had. It's a very informative course. Patrick works with you one-on-one, -on -one, so if there's any questions or anything you might be doubting, or you're uncertain of, he'll definitely be there to help. Honestly, highly suggest this course. It's taught me a lot through my journey.